All right. Hi, everyone. My name is Kenneth Reitz, and I uh, pardon my English. <laughs> so, um, yeah, my name is Kenneth Reitz. Uh, I have a GitHub page at github.com slash Kenneth Reitz. And I love Python quite a bit. Uh, I work for Heroku, which is the people that brought me here. Me and Craig are here from Heroku. Thanks for having us. Uh, and you might know me from either that or my GitHub profile. I also write the GitHub Ref Log, which is a semi-periodic uh, blog post with all the GitHub repos that are popular. What? <laughs> all right. That's weird. It's French, uh, French hardware. <laughs> 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 So I uh, wrote a lot of projects you've probably heard of. Some of them, uh, requests is really popular, which is HTTP for humans. It lets you make uh, HTTP requests. Uh, Tablib, legit, OSX GCC installer, a bunch of those. So OSX GCC installer does nothing but anger Apple's lawyers. It's quite, uh, quite entertaining, but yeah. So I write a lot of open source stuff. And this is Python for humans. So. Philosophy. We all come to Python for various reasons. You know, I'm sure we all come from the same dark past, right? <laughs> <laughs> we all worked with Perl and Java and Cold Fusion, and I'm sure some of us here even have to do this still today, and I'm very sorry. <laughs> but you know, there are certain things that attract us to Python. Uh, and that's the reason that why we use it every day. Does, does anyone want to give some good examples of what they really love about Python that they don't like about other languages? Readability. Readability. That's a huge one. Yeah. No semicolon. <laughs> <laughs> so no, you. Yeah. Because of the semicolon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's a great reason. Although it's still valid syntax if you put it there. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> So syntactic, simplicity, uh, con conciseness, and readability. There's a lot of things that we really value. Um, so the top of this list, I'd say, is the Zen of Python. I'm sure all of you are familiar with this. If you type import this at a, in an interactive interpreter, it spits out all of the key values and philosophies of Python. Some of the more important ones are beautiful is better than ugly, as you alluded to. Explicit is better than implicit. It's always better to very specifically point out the things that you're doing instead of just having them magically happen as a side effect of what you're doing. Simple is better than complex, and complex isn't necessarily better than complicated. <laughs> uh, if the implementation is hard to explain, then it's a bad idea. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you are Pi Pi. <laughs> I think we all know that's very true. <laughs> uh, and this is the most important one that we're going to touch on the most today. And it's that there should be one, and preferably only one, obvious way to do it. These are the things that we value as a community. They're the reasons that we've all used Python every day. And they're the things that make us different from all the other languages. But unfortunately, that is not always the case. It's not hard to make it the case. So. Welcome to paradise. You've chosen Python. You're enjoying yourself. You like all these values. You know, let's say you just came over from PHP or Ruby. Uh, you know, everything's going to be awesome. Not true. <laughs> <laughs> Lies. <laughs> all right, so let's say the first thing we want to do, let's say we were working with Ruby before, and we were, you know, pretty simple thing to do is make a request to the GitHub API. So we know it in Ruby, so let's write that first, and then we'll do it in Python. So in Ruby, it's pr relatively straightforward. It's not as good as it could be, but so what you do is you require the HTTP module and a URI module. You take your URL that you have, and you parse it, and you create a new HTTP connection with the host and the port from the parsed URL. You tell it to use SSL. Then you tell it to make a new GET request from the, from the URI, and then you attach some basic authentication. And then you make your request, and then you get the value. Simple enough. Pretty straightforward. Very explicit. So 
First thing we need to do if we're going to do this in Python is figure out where is Python's version of net slash HTTP. Well, when you go and Google this, you'll find many answers. You'll find HTTP live, HTTP live 2, URL live, URL lib 2, uh, URL lib 3, <laughs> HTTP lib 2, uh, rest kit, bunch of them. <laughs> uh, this is a little bit better than Python. Three. They refactored a little bit of the name, so most of the standard library ones are underneath the HTTP module, which helps a lot. But you know, we're all using 2.7, so still a problem. So several hours later, <laughs> you're going to come up with this horrid piece of code, and this is how to hit the GitHub API with the standard library. So you import URL lib2, you have your URL, you create a new request object from URL lib2 with that URL, and then you create a password HTTP manager with a default realm. <laughs> and then you add your password into it, attach the URL to it. And then you create a basic authentication handler that you install into, no, you just create the auth manager. And then you create an opener, a URL lib2 opener that you install with the auth manager. And then you install the opener. And then you can open your URL and then read it like a socket. Actually, I lied. There's a lot more. <laughs> so the uh, GitHub API, unlike so they use a essentially they have secured endpoints. So if you make a request for a private repository, uh, it, instead of doing a 403, they'll do a 404. So instead of saying not authorized, they say I don't know what you're talking about. So uh, you cannot you cannot send basic authentication in Python with these with this system at all. So you have to write a forced basic auth handler that will send it no matter what the status code, or if it's a 401. Uh, it's, it's terrible. And it, this actually is just a small clip of it. It's actually like three times longer. But it's the only way to do it without, with using URLib2. It's, it's the worst. <laughs> so admit it. If this is your very first experience with Python, you'd probably leave and never come back. The problem is that it's unclear which module you're supposed to use in the first place. The prognosis online seems to be the best practice is URL lib2, but the documentation is absolutely useless. And even if you find some decent documentation written by someone else on some blog, it's like the worst API in the universe. <laughs> I'm sure we all share this pain, right? <laughs> so this, some people will argue that this isn't actually a very big deal, but I think it's a very serious problem because you know, HTTP is essentially our universal protocol that we use every day. It should be the most natural thing in a language because, I mean, I'd say 90% of the time when someone's learning how to program, the first thing they're going to want to do is hit a web service or when they're learning a language coming from something else. So HTTP should be as simple as the print statement. So the solution is simple. You have to build elegant tools to perform these tasks. Python needs pragmatic packages that'll take, well, here. Pragmatic means dealing with things sensibly and realistically in a way that is based on practical rather than theoretical considerations. If you look at URLib2 and the set of handlers and the mechanisms they built, it's extremely over-engineered. And it's, it's definitely not pragmatic at all. They take the uh, most complicated route possible. So that is Python for humans. Let's break it down. What is HTTP at its core? It is essentially a small set of methods with consistent parameters. You have the different methods. You have get, head, push, post, everything else. And they all accept headers, URL parameters, and form data. And that's essentially it. URL2 is toxic. <laughs> As we said, it's heavily over-engineered. It completely ignores half of PEP20. Uh, docs are absolutely, I mean, have you read the docs at all? Like, they're like, they're, they're just completely useless. They don't tell you how to even make a request. Uh, HTTP is simple, it's not, and I really feel like it'll scare a lot of people away when they start. So, this beeped at me. Is it good? All right. Enter requests. HTTP for humans. So, with uh, the pragmatic version of URL lib2, you simply import requests, you have your URL, and your username and password, 
and you make a GET request, and then you get the response. <laughs> <laughs> Achievement unlocked. <laughs> it's a small set of methods with consistent parameters, all the different methods, and they all accept headers, URL parameters, and form data. Yay. <laughs> Do this with everything. Every package that you ever encounter that is extremely difficult to use and you have to reference the documentation every time, go and make a module like this. You have to either find one, that's a lot better, or build one if it's not available to help everybody out. To do this, a uh, good goal is to fit the 90% use case, which allows you to, let's see here, yeah, 90% use case. Pretty much, you know, be pragmatic. You have to pick the things that most people do. You don't have to fit every single corner case. Just do one thing at a time. The API is all that matters in the beginning. Everything else is secondary. That means performance, Features, efficiency, corner cases, everything. Make sure the API is perfect, and then all those things can improve over time. For example, requests, when it first started out, was not very powerful. It pretty much just worked. Um, but it deeply resonated with people and got a lot of contributors and people engaged and helping in the process. And the features grew over time, and the API never changed. So today, it supports cookies, sessions, content iteration, decompression, file uploads, asynchronous I.O., keep alive, etc. It's the third most, GitHub, third most watched Python GitHub project, and it has almost 200,000 downloads from uh, the cheese shop. And it's used by some big companies. So <laughs> why am I telling you all this? I'm trying to tell you this because we all need modules like this. We all want modules like this, and it's worth my time as an engineer, and it's worth everyone else's time as users. So if everyone took the time to make these packages for all the things that are difficult, I think everyone would be much better off. And I have another example with subprocess, but we can skip that. We're out of time. So my manifesto, unless there's an explicit requirement, a student should almost never be exposed to URLib2. I want no one to ever need to ever know about that unless they're like maintaining legacy code. Uh, under no excuses. So my manifesto is simplify terrible APIs. Questions? Yes. What? Why did I do what? Uh, URL3 uh -huh. is a bundle in your yes. request. Why is it not a well, so I work really closely with the guy that wrote URLib3, and uh, essentially it's considered a contribution. Uh, it's part of requests, but it happens to be available separately instead of the other way around. They're probably going to merge officially soon, so that's why. It's kind of a fork, too, so I can make changes that he hasn't done yet. Yeah. That's it. All right. Thanks. Oh, sorry. Can you talk a bit more about the future of HTTP? Yes. Um, so I got together with Armin Roenacher, uh Paul McMillan, and Audrey Petrov, Andre, and we um, discussed the future of Python HTTP at PyCon, and we are going to merge Wurzug and Request together into a new module called HTTP Core, and it'll allow you to pretty much all of the stuff. So there's like WebOB right now, which will allow you to make requests through a WSGI app and stuff, through, like with an HTTP client. But we're going to do that at the HTTP level instead of the WSGI level. So, because WSGI doesn't map one to one to, web, um, to HTTP, so we're going to be doing it at the HTTP level, and it'll be really exciting because you'll be able to make like you can completely mock requests, and you'll be able to do real OAuth tests against your Django application, for example. It'll be really exciting, and it'll uh, there's a lot of duplicated code right now too, because like you know I parse. <laughs> headers and works parses the headers and yeah. we're just going to consolidate all that code. Big merge. Yeah, exactly. That'll be really cool though. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, uh, would that eventually uh, land in standalone or not? Or uh, any plans about that? Eventually, yes. Um, not anytime soon. I was really torn about it. Like if I really tried it, I could probably get it in like in for 3.4. But it's uh, essentially a standard library is where a module goes to die. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to be. 
I it's true. I disagree because uh, mm -hmm. I've got the former example of, of ArcPass. Mm -hmm. ArcPass was just a small module that simplifies a lot your argument passing. Yes. And then it landed on, on a standard lib and fine because every time I'm, I'm installing Python 2.7, I got it. Every time I, I'm installing Python 3, I got it. That's yeah, great, because I don't have to install specifically this library. So request, I would. It's like fantastic, it. but it needs to be. ArcParse was done, right? Like there, it wasn't being actively worked on anymore, right? Yeah. That's the yeah. difference. Yes. So pretty much, I have to wait till request is like <coughs> solid, and I don't have to be working on it. If if I can go a period of like a month without needing to improve anything, then I say it's ready to go in the standard library. But that's a ways away. Okay. Yeah. Thank you Thanks. very much. Thank you. Oh. Thank you.